Hi, and welcome to the Intentional Wealth Update from Morton Brown Family Wealth. I'm Dennis Morton. And I'm Katie Brown. Hope you're doing well this week. This week, we're going to talk about something that we've come to realize is a big gap between expectations and reality, and that is what a financial advisor actually does. There's just this perception. Katie, I'm going to pull up an image here to show sometimes what people think it looks like in our office, what the activity is. You've got people on the phones, you've got inbound, you've got communications going back and forth, ticker symbols everywhere. You can hear the news music bleeping and blipping in the background as everything's at a frenetic pace. Is that what it looks like for real? No, that is, that is not our experience. I, I recognize there are some parts of our industry that is the experience, but in working in personal wealth, working with families, it, it is a, a very different world that we live in here. When we sat back and tried to design our firm, our team, our office, this is what we wanted to look like. We call this the living room. Clients sit on the couch. They get a nice view of the backdrop. It's relaxing. It doesn't feel formal and intimidating, but there's again, this gap between reality and perception. And we, we kind of went down a bunny trail this morning talking about this. What are some of the things that people expect to find when they walk into an advisor's office and the things that we're doing versus what we actually do? I think one of the first things people expect is like CNBC nonstop. Uh, a, a television posted somewhere, you know, the ticker symbol going across the bottom, something saying this is where we're at in the markets today, right at this very minute. And here are the things that you should be concerned about and that you should be addressing right this minute. Right, right. They expect us to have it on. And a lot of that is, are we aware of all the things that are happening all the times? The answer is no, we don't. We're not. We, uh, sorry. You know, I think you, you said before, like somebody asked you what's happening in the market today. Un unfortunately, it, do it doesn't matter. Frankly, in the last couple of years, especially during the pandemic, when things were going wild and crazy intraday, I would be off by hundreds and hundreds of points. If I tried to tell somebody when going from one meeting to another, what's the market doing today? Uh, down 200. Actually, it's up 350. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Well, and that's the thing. There's danger in knowing what's happening in any given minute and being like that hyper-focused. That's right. when you can make poor decisions that have lasting impact. Whereas if you can stay outside of that and, and give yourself some breathing room and, and build all the context around what's happening, that's when you make better decisions. Right. Thinking of time spent, it's much better time spent for an advisor not to be taking in all the inputs, but to be finding their own voice. It's not about you know just knowing all the details. It's having a philosophy. We talked about our investment philosophy and our planning philosophy before. But we've really worked very hard to find our voice and say, here's how we communicate about things to serve as a filter. You know, ignore that, ignore this, and focus on this. What are some other things? Like in, in your career experience, what have people you know walked in the door and expected of you that are disconnected from what you actually do? You know, I think people expect a frenzy of activity, a, a, a reactive environment where the phone's ringing with clients that are calling up with concerns and are asking, what do I need to do based on X? Once again, kind of a short term X. I think that's the expectation that, that we have this very reactive environment where we're like putting fires out versus what I would like to think is a very proactive environment. Obviously we need to be reactive. There needs to be room for both, but, but I think the assumption or the expectation is that our phones are ringing constantly with concern. Yeah, yeah. Your, your phone's supposed to be ringing off the hook. The market's crazy these days. But that's, hopefully, we've coached people to say that's not really what we want to be doing. Like, you're going to be okay. The, the whims are not there. But also, one of the expectations that I find sometimes is, especially with people interest, interested in working with us, is they'll say, are you guys, how do you guys do versus the index? Are you going to beat the index? Or how can I improve my performance? This expectation that you're this, uh, we sometimes call it the Wizard of Oz, you know, syndrome that, that somehow we're the person behind the, the curtain making magic happen and it just appears not true it, it, to be honest if we could beat the market every day we wouldn't be here you know, that, that's that's impossible no one does it all the time and i think some people go in saying if i could just improve my performance then i found the right advisor which which is not is not the case what you want to try and do is have an advisor who's communicating effectively about what you need to achieve and how best to get there but sometimes might be leaving something on the table, taking less risk and being comfortable doing so, knowing that you're going to be fine. That's a really important conversation, but it's a pivot from that expectation of 
hey, am I going to get better performance than I am on my own or with another advisor? No, you have somebody who's better focused on you. Yeah. Well, and I think it's interesting, too, because I think sometimes the expectation is, all right, you are my advisor. You are the creator of all the advice and, you know, on the other end of the phone or, or in the meeting or whatever the case may be. And, and the reality is we spend a lot of time collaborating internally. There yes. may be a client where you have the majority of the conversations, but behind the scenes, we're bringing challenges forward. We're bringing opportunities forward and saying, okay, how should we think about this? How, how do we best approach this client situation and, and trying to help them get to where they want to get to and solve for the things they want to solve for and, and reach those goals. It is a very collaborative environment right. and effort when we bring, you know, recommendations forward. Yeah. And that's, that's not always the case. I mean, we, you and I have different backgrounds. We're going to talk about some of those differences here in a minute, but you know, I got my start in a kind of a wall street bank environment. And a lot of how I spent my day was I, I have, I still have a sheet in my desk that has numbers one through 250 on it, just as a reminder of what, what I used to do. And I would make 250 dials a day calling people about a stock offering or this preferred stock or just a, an idea of the day, just trying to, you know, spark some interest or, or get, get the conversation going and everything else. And that's how every trainee was doing it you know, across the board. So how does a financial advisor spend their time calling 250 people a day trying to get somebody to say, yes, I didn't like that. It didn't work. Thank God, because that's how we got here, you know, so many years later. But we kind of migrate into this thing where we do have, it's not silos of people doing the same thing, just in different offices, you have different skill sets. So Katie, what are some of the things that you might do differently in a day than I might do? I mean, we have, we have the same title, CFPs, founders and principals of an independent firm, but our days are different. What are some things that you spend your time on? Yeah, great question. I really, really, really love problem solving and I really enjoy testing different scenarios and saying, okay, would this work for this client? Would that work for that client? What is the nuance of how money transfers in this household, whether it's studying a tax return or legal documents to, to understand the flows and in and, and testing different scenarios? That's the type of stuff that, that really gets me energized. I, I love the whole gamut of personal wealth and, and financial planning and, and even investments, but there are certain areas that really get me energized. And then there are certain things I know that, that energize you and, and we're not exactly the same. And oftentimes we use that opportunity to complement one and one another, but what are the things that get you excited? Yeah, I, I think you and I, it's a balance between very detailed and granular, like problem, you said problem solving. And mine is more like, how do we think about this? Like we work with 200 families. How should these families be thinking about what's happening in the markets? How should they be thinking about financial planning? How should they be? Because this is another expectation. People want us to predict the future. What's going to happen with interest rates? I don't know. What's, where's the market going to end this year? I have no idea. But how should we be thinking about the trend in interest rates? How should we be thinking about the markets, whether they're up or down? That's a really important question and something that we can help people to work through. And I love being able to find the language, bring the language forward so that they can step back and say, whatever the market does, I know I can be comfortable with it because Morton Brown helped me to think through what's happening there. That's a great use of advisor time. It comes back to one of our words for this year, which is influence. How can we influence people to do it? And if we're spending time concentrating on how to wield that influence in a positive way, it's a great use of time. Just not creating like the chaos, like being a catalyst for just distraction. If we can be the opposite of that, that's really important. I think it's really important for families to understand that, like you said, we can't predict the future. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. We may not have strong conviction in this is the thing that you need to do. Much of it comes back to not only collaboration that, that we have, but the collaboration with the families, asking a lot of questions, asking for feedback, getting to, to better understand what it is that they are trying to achieve because what we see on our end might not marry up exactly with what they are trying to achieve. And, and so helping to find that, that place where everybody's bought into the plan, into the strategy, into the scenarios, but to get there, it's a lot of, it's a lot of back and forth. It's a lot of learning from one another. Yeah. And that's, I think that's another thing that people expect from us sometimes is that, or they may not come to a financial advisor because they're afraid they're going to be scolded. 
but the advisor is going to tell them you're doing the wrong things. This is all wrong. But, but that our better role is not to tell them th th those types of things and make them feel bad. It's to ask questions and unearth like the why behind it and, and help, help to, you know, if, if behavior needs to be changed, so be it. But, but you work through that through questioning. So all right, we've been challenged recently in some of our coaching sessions to figure out how to best use our time. So Katie, if we could wave a magic wand and say, all right, you can spend X amount more time doing this and you'll feel energized, be productive and, and have good influence on, on clients. What would that be? Where would you spend more time? For me, I think it's going back to that why. It's, it's, it's understanding different perspectives, different mindsets and how that shows up in somebody's financial life. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be different from person to person, from couple to couple, from family to family. I would love to spend more and more time there just calling up clients and, and just picking their brain for a little bit and understanding what's working, yeah. what's not working and why. Yeah. yeah. How about you? I think for, you know, we're in the fortunate position to be able to grow and develop a team as an independent advisory firm. So sometimes, like I said, it can be siloed in other business models, but I would spend more time developing our team and making sure that we were using the talents um, to, to the best of their abilities, helping them to become the best version of their professional selves but also having it come to bear in results for, for clients. I think more team development um, would be a, a good use of time and, and it, would, you know, it, would, it would show up, I think, really well. Yes, yeah, I think that is helpful. I, th I think we do have very much an environment that it appreciates that and, and pulls that forward, but it's always an ongoing process. It There's is. always the question, how do we make it better? How do we run more efficiently? How do we, how do we, find the deliverable that this really going to be meaningful. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is a rich conversation. We, we have a laundry list of other things we didn't talk about as far as expectations of advisors and everything else, but we encourage you to share with us what your expectations are of an advisory relationship. It helps us to learn more where people are coming from, how both the industry sets the standard, how we can set a better standard. So uh, share, uh, share with us. We've gotten some great emails recently from clients and otherwise. So uh, until next time, we look forward to seeing you and have a great rest of the week. Thank you.